Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jerry and I like to crochet. So with Valentine's Day being just around the corner, I thought I would teach you guys how to make some really cute projects that you can give to your partner, or if you're single, like me, you could make these for yourself to give yourself a little bit of self-love too. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I think that handmade gifts are just the sweetest thing ever. I really, really appreciate when someone takes their time to write me a card or make me something. In fact, I keep every single card that anyone has ever written me. So if you're unsure of what to give your partner this year, maybe you can have a go and see if you could create something for them and hopefully they will appreciate all the effort and love that you put into making it for them. These are all gonna be some super quick projects to make. They should probably each take you a few hours hours nothing more and that's because if you're like me I'm lazy and I can't complete a big project for the life of me. This is also going to be a beginner friendly tutorial but it would help if you do have prior crochet knowledge but again all of these projects are super super simple and shouldn't take you very long to make. The first thing I'm going to teach you guys how to make is actually a book sleeve. One of my resolutions for this new year was to actually start reading more because for someone who studied English literature at university, I do not read books. What up? I'm Jared, I'm 19 and I never fucking learned how to read. This is something super simple to make. All you need is two colors of yarn. So I will be using cream and then for a little heart, I will be using either red or pink. I haven't quite decided yet actually. And you need a crochet hook, a darning needle, and you also need the book that you are going to be using. To make this book sleeve more Valentine's Day suited, I thought we should make a shape which looks a bit like a love letter and that would be really really sweet because it's like your partner will think that they're reading a love letter from you every time they use it. So these are the colours that I'm going to be working with today. I have two options for the heart because I haven't made up my mind yet and the book that I'm going to be using for size reference is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Platt because I am a depressed girly I'm also going to be using a 5.5 millimeter hook for this but you can just use any size which is within the same kind of range I don't think that it really matters the size of the hook just make sure that it suits the yarn that you are using so in order to start making this book sleeve all you need to do first is chain the length of the spine you're going to start by putting your yarn onto your hook so all you need to do is wrap the string around your finger Pull the end of the string through and just place it onto your hook. And now we're just going to create this single chain. So all you need to do is wrap the string around the hook and pull through the little gap at the bottom. It's very simple to make. And you are just going to keep doing these until you hit the length of your spine. So for me and the book I was using, that was about 25 chains. So I just wanted to show you guys what I've done so far. This is my chain of 25 and it fits the length of the spine. So now I'm just going to be creating single crochets all the way down the chain. And in order to do this, you put your hook in between the little gap in the chain, pull the string through until you have two strands on your hook, and then wrap the yarn around one more time and pull through both loops. So as you can see, I've now reached the end of the row. And now that we're here, we're going to do a little something different. So all we're going to do is place one more single crochet in the last chain at the end of the hook. So I'm gonna place one more single crochet. And now, instead of chaining one and going back along this row, we are actually going to chain into the bottom. And this is what is gonna create the bend of the envelope so that this book sleeve can go around the book. So I just chained my extra stitch into the last stitch of the line. And now what we're going to do is we are going to continue doing, doing single crochets all along this side, so the bottom. And what you can do is you see we have this leftover tail here what you can do is you can actually tuck it in as you crochet and that means you are not left with this little line to weave in at the end once you get to the end of the row you're going to do the exact same thing as we did on the previous side so you are going to add one extra single crochet into the last hole and then we are going to create a slip stitch. So a slip stitch is made essentially by finding the first stitch 
in the previous row so that's this one here you can tell because there's a little V you're going to put your hook through you're going to chain up pull up a loop and instead of going up like this so instead of pulling the yarn instead all you do is you just pull it through like so and then we are going to chain one so that is how we have this little length here. And now all we're going to do is keep going in the same pattern, so chaining all the way round, no need to do extra stitches this time, and then slip stitching into that first slip stitch at the beginning. What this will do is this will create the width and it will build the length up in this double-sided shape. <laughs> So as you can see, I have created the length of my book and now what we need to do is we need to create the part which covers the actual pages of your book. So instead of going all the way round on both sides, what we are going to do is we are going to stick to one side only. We are going to do the same thing, we are going to create single crochets along the row and instead of going round, we are just going to go back again, again and again until you have covered the actual pages. So now that we've created this little shape what we are going to be doing is we are going to start doing single crochet decreases so all you have to do for that is basically we're going to be chaining these two and these two together so that we get an envelope shape that goes into a little triangle so in order to do that we're going to flip our work so that we're on the correct side and we're going to start to do a single crochet and instead of turning and completing the single crochet, we are going to go into the next stitch like so, so that we have one, two, three loops on the end of our hook. And then we are going to yarn over and pull through all three. And that is how you create a single crochet decrease. And now we're just going to keep single crocheting along the row until we reach the last two stitches. So now that I only have two more stitches at the end of the row, I'm going to do another single crochet decrease before flipping my work and going straight into another single crochet decrease here. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing this pattern of single crochet decreases all along until we finally have this little triangular envelope shape at the bottom. So keep doing this all along each row and I will meet you back to teach you how to do the heart. So as you can see, I finished doing the envelope here and I was going to make the heart, but actually I don't really like how the edges don't look very even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my yarn in here and I'm actually going to slip stitch all around the side. And what this will do is create a nice even effect so that it's not very bumpy so as you can see I slip stitched all around the edges and it looks so much better now it just looks less bumpy than it did before hey guys editing Jerry here um, I'm really sorry but the next footage of me making the heart came out a little bit shit because when I film these like POV shots I actually just shove my phone in my t-shirt and hope for the best and in this case it came out quite a bit shaky and quite a bit of the top was cut off so what I will do is I will leave a link in the description on how to make this heart but I will still include the footage of me making it in case you wanted to see um, again I'm really really sorry about this I'm very new to YouTube I've just started learning how to make videos but uh, yeah I guess for next time I really should buy a tripod or something now I'm going to be teaching you how to make the heart and I've decided to use a red yarn for this so first of all we have to do a magic loop so in order to do this you take your yarn you wrap it around your finger you take your crochet hook and you put it through this little gap you pull under, wrap it round, and pull through this little gap. And then we're going to chain one. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna do three treble crochets. And instead of putting your hook straight into the circle, what we are going to do is we are going to wrap round twice, okay? So we've wrapped the string round twice, and then we are going to put it in. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four loops on our hook. So all you need to do is we're going to do these in groups of two. So two, now we have three, two, and then the last two. So that is how you create a treble. So that was one, let's do it again. So wrap round twice into the hoop, two, two, two. Okay, so now that we've created our three trebles, we are going to create two doubles. So wrap round once, We've got three loops on our hook. We're going to do the first two, second two.
and then the last one, first two, second two. And now we are going to chain one. And then we're going to create one more treble. One, two, three, and then chain one again. And this creates the first half of your heart. I know it doesn't really look like it right now, but when we pull it together at the end, it will make a really cute heart shape. So because we've done the middle bit, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing in reverse. So we're going to create three double crochets and now three treble crochets. And now we're going to pull this yarn at the back. You can see we've got a nice little heart shape. And in order to end this off, we're just going to do a slip stitch into the middle of the circle. And then we can cut our yarn. and we can chain off. And now, this cute little heart shape. So now that we've created the envelope and we've also got our little heart, all we need to do is get a darning needle. So this is my little pack of two and just attach it onto here and you can use these long pieces of red and then also tuck in the ends that you have if you decided to do the slip stitching along the side. I just finished weaving in all my ends and putting all the pieces together and this is what the finished book sleeve looks like. I think it turned out really sweet. I'm very glad I went with the red heart instead of the pink. I think it just gives it a more classic look. And yeah, as you can see, I've already got my book inside. And it's just very simple, very easy to take in and put out. Now you can have a nice little book sleeve for when you're reading on the go. So remember earlier on in the book sleeve tutorial, I taught you how to make a heart. Actually, what I thought I would do because I had some leftover yarn is make a couple spares and turn these into earrings. So as you can see, I have these two spare heart pieces that I've made. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck in the ends using my darning needle. And then I'm gonna use these earring pieces that I ordered off Shopee because I live in Asia. But I'm sure you can order them off Amazon or you could buy them at the crafting store near your house. And then I'm just gonna use my nails to put them together. It's a little bit nitpicky, but it's really, really simple. And I actually found that putting the earring pieces onto the crochet heart took longer than it did for me to make the crochet heart itself. So I'm just gonna quickly teach you how to darn in your ends. All you need to do is use a darning needle, attach it onto your yarn, and just kind of weave in between the back of your work. So just do this a few times, and this will ensure that your work is secure, and then you can take your scissors and cut it off. So now comes the fiddly part. I'm going to take my little earring pieces and I'm just going to use my nails to split this. So it might take me a little while because I have two long nails and it doesn't really work. So... Okay, got it. So as you can see, hopefully, I've just kind of split this a little bit and I'm going to put it into the center of my heart. So just here. Okay, finally got it, it's attached to the heart. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this earring piece, secure it on, and then again, use my nails to tighten it. And as you can see, I'm now wearing my earrings. They are very, very sweet. And yeah, this literally took me only 15 minutes to make. So if you are a last minute present giver like me, these are just some very easy gift ideas you can give to someone. So the next thing I'm going to be teaching you how to make is this really, really cute granny square crochet bucket hat. And all you need to do is create five granny squares and then do some trimming on the bottom. And that's all it takes to make this hat. For me personally, I did not come up with this granny square. So what I will do is I will put a link in the description on how to make these granny squares and they should look like this. I decided to use pink and red for this granny square hat, but you can really use whatever colors you would like. I just thought because we're going with like a Valentine's Day theme, it might be nicer to have some more loving colors so please look at the description and follow the link that i've put there on how to make these granny squares and then come back to the video once you've made five of those so as you can see i've made five of these and four of them are going to act as the sides of the head and one of them is going to be the top and i was just looking at them and i was thinking because i have a bigger size head i don't think this is going to be big enough to suit my head so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pink yarn and i'm going to make one extra layer around the end of each square so that the hat size is a bit bigger and will fit my head. So in order to do the pink layer around the edges of the granny square, I've literally just tied my yarn onto the middle of the granny square and I'm gonna start by doing three chains. So that is one, two, 
three. And this acts like a double crochet. So I'm only going to do two more into this little space. So one, two. And then I'm gonna chain one. And then now we can continue with the pattern that was shown in the tutorial that I put in the description. So you're just gonna keep doing three double crochets in each hole and then making the corner on the sides. So this is what my granny square looks like now that I've put the pink trim around the edges. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip stitch all of my squares together. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating a cube shape without the bottom. So all I've done so far is I've attached my yarn literally just by tying it to the top. And this is how we do a slip stitch. So we're going to wrap the yarn around pull down so we have one loop on the edge of the hook and then we are going to put it in between these little v's so the outer one here so this is a little bit nitpicky because the stitches are quite tight and then the first one here and we're going to pull up a loop and instead of wrapping around to do a single crochet we are just going to pull through so i'll do it one more time so you can see again i'm going to put my yarn in like so i'm going to pull down the string and then I'm going to pull through. So we're just going to keep doing this along all the pieces so that we have this nice little cube shape. I also want to mention one more thing. It's probably a good idea to flip your pieces inside out while you are doing the slip stitches along the end because then when you fold it the right way around you'll have this nice little tight seam in the middle. So I finished slip stitching all the pieces together and this is what I have so far. As you can tell, this is the hat shape. And now all we need to do is add the brim. So I'm gonna take my pink yarn again and all I'm going to do is do treble crochets into each stitch at the bottom. And this will create the length and it will also create like a nice kind of swirly effect. So I just inserted my yarn at any point in the hat. It doesn't really matter exactly where you do it. And I'm going to start by chaining four and this acts like a treble crochet. And now I'm just going to go along each single stitch and I'm going to insert a treble crochet. And I'm gonna do this all around the brim. So when you finish the last stitch here, you can see we've got a bit of a gap. So all you need to do is just slip stitch into the first stitch and then you can cut your yarn and tie off. So this next step is completely compulsory, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to add another level of contrast. So I'm just gonna take my leftover red yarn and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to do single crochets all along the brim. So now that I've finished adding this red brim, now comes my least favorite part of tucking in all the ends. And as you can tell, there is a lot this time. So I'm going to cry for a little bit and then spend all this time tucking in my ends. So this is the completed bucket hat. I'm not really sure if it suits me that well, but I will say the color combination is really, really sweet. I really like the heart details that go all over the top. And as you can see, I, I lied about tucking in the edges. I haven't finished yet. But yeah, I think it goes really well with the earrings that I'm wearing that I made previously. And I think this would be a pretty sweet gift to give someone. I'm going to teach you how to make is literally the easiest project ever and it's these cute little ribbon hair ties that I've seen all over TikTok and all over Pinterest recently and for this project I'm going to be using a different color yarn I found this one at the craft store near my house and it's just this really nice mixture of red white and pink and for this project literally all you need to do is a chain stitch so I did about 50 chains for mine because my hair is a bit thicker and also I wanted the ribbons to be of a certain length but for you you can really adjust this depending on the thickness of your hair and also how long you want the strands of the ribbon to be. So as you can see, I've made two strains, each with 50 chains each, and I've still got these little pieces of yarn left at the bottom. So all we are going to do is get our darning needle again and insert them into the line. So as you can see, I've inserted my darning needle onto the end of my string, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put through the string like this. And then I'm gonna pull it through. And I'm not going to pull too tight because if you do it makes the line shorter and this should be enough to secure it. I know you can see it on the back but that's only because my colour is different whereas if you're using the same colour yarn this shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to go through a little bit more. And pull through. And then all I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut the yarn. And now, 
kind of camouflaged within the string. So as you can see, I just tied my hair into plaits and I just added the ribbons. And what I did is I placed the ribbons above my hair tie. And this means there's less risk of it slipping down and falling off. And I just think they're very, very sweet. Like maybe you could wear them to elevate your outfit or maybe you could just give them to someone that you are seeing. Maybe your partner has long hair. And yeah, I just think they look really, really nice. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you try your hand at making any of these, please tag me on my Instagram. I would love to see how you guys did. And in the meantime, if you have any requests, if you want any tutorials and stuff like that, please let me know in the comments down below. And do not forget to subscribe and turn on my notifications. With that being said, I will see you next time. Bye bye.